Concerning the biblical teachings on the family, you can see it there on your screen. What can we learn about the law of the family in the society, in African society, and how should members of the Christian family, family relate to one another? You can see the key uh, passages there, down there, on your screen. 1 Corinthians 7, 2, uh, 11, Ephesians 5, 21. It's all about the husband and wife relationship is there. The law of husband is there in 1 Timothy 5, 8. The law of the wife, Genesis 2, 8. The parent-child relationship, Luke 2, 5, 1, Exodus 20, 12. Ephesians uh, 6, 1. Family life as a religious foundation according to Deuteronomy 6, 4. And uh, more and more, you can see all this. And uh, you can see all that. Yeah, something else. Parents are charged with the duty of making sure that their children learn God's commandments. Yes. And what do we learn about family in these passages? One, a husband is the hand of the family, just as Christ is the hand of the church. Number two, mutual respect is important. A wife should love and ape for her husband and children, just as a husband should love his wife and children and treat them kindly. The other one is a father should work hard to care for his family. Of course, we are having drunkard fathers. These days, he just sleeps under the bed, you know, all that. There's such glaring, bizarre, story, bizarre stories. The father must provide basic needs to his wife and children. A father must also provide for the family's spiritual needs. You see, even spiritual needs is a father. But most families, it is a mother providing spiritual needs, spiritual food. Father, t yeah, we have seen, father takes the lead in helping his family to learn about God. In Kenya, we normally see uh, people translating the Bible and acting according to these passages, mainly they are Corino sect. You find a real father, a Mokorino father, with that turban they wear, the white turban, my friend. They really lead spiritually. The other one is a wife cares for her family lovingly. Yes, it's not a question of always talking bad things about uh, the husband. If you are a woman, most women talk about very bad things about husbands to their children. We have also learned something from those passages above, that children should obey and respect their parents. You need to lead all of them. The other one is parents should treat their children with understanding. They should not provoke the children. The other one is marriage partners are expected to be faithful to one another. The other one is looking at the other biblical teachings on the family. And uh, the relationship between Christ and the church is de depicted in the NT. The rules write on what is expected of a family. The relationship between Jesus and his church is one of unity of love. The church is the body of Christ whose members are united. This is what a Christian family should be. Okay? And uh, it's all about uh, unity and love as essential elements expected in the family. Paul compares the love of a husband and a wife to that of Christ loving the church. That is Ephesians 5, 25 to 32. Another dimension of the law and of families is also spelled out in 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 to 13. Families are to serve the church and society, help people in need, the poor and suffering, those who are unjustly treated. The Christian family places itself in the service of human humans and the society bringing about human advancement. Christians have the responsibility to open their homes to the destitute, the needy, and to all those who need care and attention. In serving others, in serving others, uh, in society, they serve Christ, according to Matthew 25, uh, 
31 to 46. Each family is seen as an important part of the body of Christ, the church, and all that. Families are vital in building the kingdom. Now, the family is the domestic sanctuary of the church. It makes the church present it makes the church present in the life of the family. It is in fact a miniature church. How? Miniature is a small, means small. So a family is a miniature or a small church, minute. But remember, it's, called, it's a church the way we have seen from biblical understanding. Because that is where worship begins, spiritual upbringing and growth starts. How? As in the church, we find the mutual affection of its members, family prayers, participation in public worship and practice of good works in society. So when you are treating members of your family with good works, you are telling them also do likewise. Now, in concluding that section, the Bible, that's a biblical understanding of family, the Bible clearly teaches that the family is a community of, of love. The main characteristics of a Christian family is love, joy, patience, kindness, and all qualities of love given to us by St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Now, this kind of environment is the best to bring up children. Handwork, sharing, and responsibilities all continue to a successful Christian family. Such families will live in peace and harmony. Now, the other thing we may look at as we, uh, we wind up is, uh, is teachings of the church on the family. We look at it as we wind up for, for today's lesson. Um, now, the various roles of uh, the family as seen in the Bible continue to be seen in the teachings of the church, especially the Catholic Church, that has written extensively on the family. The Roman Catholic, like most churches, views the family as the most fundamental community of life and love, also seen as a domestic church. This was coined during the Vatican II of 1962 to 1965. And this means that the Christian values that are taught and lived in the church should be reflected in the family. Okay, Pope John Paul I referred to the family as domestic church in which the family first hears the word of God in reference to Deuteronomy 4, 9 to 10, Proverbs 22, 6. It is the duty of parents to preach or to teach their children Christian values. The Catholic Church gives the model of the Holy Family as an example of an ideal family in which Mary Coop Mary cooperated with God, with God to become the mother of Jesus. Okay? Joseph was a carpenter and worked hard to provide for his family while Jesus is seen as an obedient child. It was also a monogamous family, as we talked of it as ideal. So Christians are called to protect this model of the Holy Family. That is the Roman Catholic teaching, and largely it's a problem, it's a teaching of all of us. Uh, or the general Christian society. Now, the last portion is the problems and threats to the family in Africa. Of course, now you understand, a family is faced by several problems. Just as the family in the Bible is also was also faced by lots of problems. Look at the first family, the story of Cain and Abel in Genesis 4, 1 to 15. Uh, the story of Jacob and Esau, you remember one cheating the other in Genesis 26 and 27. Look at Samuel, uh, look at Samuel 13. We read, we read about David's son, Ammon, who raped his half-sister, Tama. Ammon is killed consequently for raping um, his sister, half-sister. I know of Ammon, not Amnon. I know of Ammon. You also see in Leviticus 8.8, 8, family was faced by the challenge of incest. We see it there. Today, the family in Africa is experiencing difficulties because of extended family structures, 
that have been weakened by rural urban migration and the support that individuals had, and which is no longer there, both socially and economically. And this has brought about uh, changes in the division of labor. It is no longer a clear-cut division of labor where this is for women, the other one is for men. No longer so. So that's a challenge when we have no clear-cut way of defining the role of men and women. There are times when women are actually the hands of families. There are times when women are spiritual leaders in their families. There are times when women are more responsible in their family. There are times when women are the ones who are earning the daily bread. That is not what we saw in African society. That's not what we have seen in biblical passages. But also, Bible anticipates changes. So changes are in culture. Culture is dynamic. Even biblical culture is dynamic, and culture changes, and things change. Even our people say, Vindu change anger. Things are going to change. So women today are working to supplement the family income. Children are undergoing child labor because of poverty. And in many households, men are no longer the sole breadwinners. So it is said that currently the family is the most violent social unit. Those are some of the challenges we are facing today. Not just child labor, not just division of labor changing. We note the increased incidence of child sexual abuse. In the family, at the family level, incest, rape, domestic violence, spousal abuse, where a woman is abused, the husband is abused. There's today somebody uh, in my home county, according to the newspaper, where a woman killed the husband and friend with a six months old baby, left the family after killing the husband. I suspect the man was drunk. These cases of violence, particularly due to the raging poverty in the country, lack of anything, is causing a lot of depression, burnouts that may make you kill or do some things that are harmful to the family. So there is also high rate of separations. Too many. Divorce, adultery, different values and aspirations, finance among others, and the marriages whose consequences are the growing number of step relationships in families and complicates what's a family now. Because there are so many step families that are separated. There are always people going taking one another to court, saying we were the first family, we, we, your father chased us, he's dead now. And now we want to reclaim it. And they are, the other one, the younger family fighting them. And I know of so many cases. Single parenthood is also another challenge to families today. Some are by choice, okay? But they are also seen as a threat to ideal family setup. But you see some churches are accepting single parenthood. Some are even becoming bishops. Mm, single parents becoming bishops in particular Pentecostal and independent churches. Okay? There are also threats from loose sort of marriages. There is a lot of loose marriages where nobody paying the dowry. Nobody makes a formal arrangement that involves the two clans or the two families. It's something people make arrangements somewhere. Okay? And uh, so there are questions about families that are created on unstable foundations. So another challenge to, for families today is poverty. Um, poverty, many families live below poverty line, below a dollar per day and are just barely surviving. Not living, but surviving. Poverty brings economic hardships. Poverty brings economic hardships. Yes. A lot of economic hardship brought by uh, those experienced at the family level. And uh, I'm not wondering whether uh, there's one who can dispute that. I hope none of us will dispute that. It is that bad. The situation is uh, that troubling. Mm -hmm. And you know poverty brings economic hardships. Families are breaking up. A phenomenon where we create street children. Because where do you go? After all is lost, where do you go? At most times, the cycle of poverty continues. There is also high cost of living now, unemployment, underemployment, where some are underpaid. There are fears, particularly this era where retrenchment, we are being told, 
uh, triggered by MF, IMF this time, not even World Bank, as they did in the year 2000, where people were sacked. And when they were sacked, some men went to drunkardness, feeling you know, helpless. They went to the local brews where they became wasted, and some died. By now, they are dead. And that hurts family. And the, these are some of the challenges. If the current government accepts the prescription of downsizing, they are calling it this time rationalizing. That rationalizing is nothing but sucking people, retrenching people. It is what came in the year 2000 from the World Bank and IMF so that you attract donor money to fund your projects in the country. And it causes an untold suffering because in Africa, salary of one man is a salary of 20, 100 people. And so we are communal society. Sucking one is sucking over 300 people. That literally is eaten, consumed by so many people who use it to survive. Um, it can be explained in details. This is not Europe here. This is Africa. Another challenge facing family today is advance of science and technology, particularly when you talk about in vitro fertilization, surrogacy, cloning, or genetic engineering. You can hear of a lot about technology if misused. Abortion, overpopulation, degradation of the environment, or having a bearing on family and well-being of the society at large. Another challenge facing family is HIV and AIDS effects, which include orphan children, okay, child-led families, massive poverty, poverty on a mass scale, stigmatization and abandonment. Sick adults cannot adequately provide for their families. There is also alcoholism and drug addiction abandonment of responsibilities, among others. There is also a challenge of homosexuality, particularly when youths get into it. Now, what should the church do? What is the response of the church to, to, this, to these threats to the family? And, and why? The other question is, uh, why should the churches be concerned about the family? Now, as the most basic social unit, the family has wide-ranging implications on the whole fabric of society. During his visit to Kenya in 1986, Pope John Paul II had this to say about the family. He said, no human group is able to produce such great impact on a country as a family. He went on to describe the family as a cell, the cell of any society with a great impact. On the, so, on the society than any other group. Uh, John Paul II recognized that the well-being of the society is intimately tied to the good of the family and vice versa. The family is the foundation of human society. Now, rural urban migration weakens the fabrics of the family, leaving women, children, and the elderly to fend for themselves as a strong, productive labor force, go out in search of employment and social security. So families are faced with economic hardships. They are also faced by diseases and violence. A lot of violence every day. You heard of the, the Kiambu killings, the famous killings where the, the wife was accused of organizing for the killing of the leech husband, who, whom they were more or less estranged despite being wealthy. The other is the family today is no longer seen as a place of love and security as its major concern. Yes, that's the far we, we may go today. And unless there's any question, we will stop there today. Any comment?